Today, I wanna to talk about communication and give you practical tips that you can apply today to improve how you work with your team. Communication is what separates the best engineers from the mediocre ones. Some engineers think they can just focus on the code, but they realize very quickly when they get into a job and enter the professional world, how wrong that approach is. Nothing great is ever built alone. And so at some point in your career, no matter how good of a coder you are, you will have to work with other people. When you get to that point, communication is how you get things done. For most of my career, and in fact, most of my life, I've made a bunch of mistakes that I could have easily fixed if someone had just pointed them out to me, which is what I'm hoping to do for you with this video. Here are eight tips I've learned throughout my career to communicate more effectively. Before I talk about the tips, be sure to hit that like and Never mind, let's just get into it. Tip number one is to learn the art of saying no or rejecting ideas gracefully. And the scenario is that your product manager or project manager, or TPM, is gonna come to you and say, hey, can you do this thing for me? And you either don't want to do it or you can't do it because you're working on something else. With past Rahul, one of three things would have happened and all three of them would have been pretty unfortunate. Number one, I would have just said no in a way that damaged the relationship. Number two, I would have just stayed silent and hoped and prayed that someone else would pick up that task. Or number three, I would have actually said yes because I couldn't figure out a way to actually say no politely or gracefully. The solution is instead of saying a hard no, just say not right now. So you can say, hey, I'm working on this project for now. But I'd love to revisit what you're talking about in a week when I get done. You can also talk about the cost of saying yes. If you do accept this incoming work, then your current work may get delayed. And what would be the consequence of that? Maybe you won't hit a revenue goal or a DAU goal or this experiment wouldn't ship. And so explain that when you're saying not right now. This approach lets you acknowledge the request coming in, but you're able to politely and firmly say no by explaining why you're doing what you're doing. Communication tip number two is to use tentative language. And the scenario here is that you're going into another team and you're trying to explain to them why they should change their API in order to make some integration easier especially for areas where you're not the expert, for example, another team's API or for other people's feelings, you wanna make sure you use collaborative and tentative language because there is always a chance that your understanding of the situation could be wrong. It is okay to have opinions about how things work. And in fact, at the senior and higher levels, it's expected that you will have opinions and influence across not just your own work, but the team's work and other team's work. But your job as a leader is to make sure that your opinions get heard in good faith and people actually take action based on your recommendation. So in this scenario, you might walk into that team meeting and say, I think that this modification would allow multiple teams to integrate a lot faster. How might we accommodate that? This tactic is especially important when you're giving critical feedback to someone. For example, I would never say, you need to talk less in meetings. Instead, I would say, I wonder if the extent to which you participate in meetings could lead to others not participating as much. The language here leaves room for discussion, and it also focuses on the negative impact of the behavior rather than the behavior in isolation. Finally, one more area where it's really helpful to be tentative is with code review. So what I did at Meta and what a lot of the very senior folks did when they were trying to correct or give feedback to someone's code is instead of just saying a comment like, hey, there's a bug here, they would end literally every single constructive feedback on a code review with a question mark. So they might say, there might be a bug here, question mark. And that one character difference, that question mark at the end, makes a really big difference in how that feedback is received by the code author. Tip number three is to make people feel heard. And the scenario here is that you're having a discussion with your colleague or your manager, and you're trying to come to an agreement about something. And whether it's a heated conversation or not, the tactic is to repeat back to the other person what you heard in terms of their emotion or their story so you acknowledge where they're coming from. This turns out to work magically well because even if you end up disagreeing on the outcome of that meeting, at least now you're starting from a place of agreement. You feel like you heard each other. You're acknowledging what the perspective is of the other person. In the one-on-ones I have, I will literally say, let me say that back to you. And then I'll proceed to reflect back at them in my own words, what I heard from them. And at the end, I'll say, did I get that right? And I think just doing that is really disarming and a really powerful way to make a connection and feel like you're on the same team. I run this company, Kataro, jointaro.com, and the idea is that we help engineers advance in their career. And with every new member of Taro Premium, my co-founder Alex and I, we offer a one-on-one -on -one to each person. And this has been really effective as a way to really understand what people are looking for. Just trying this tactic of, hey, let me say that back to you. What are you looking for and how can we help? So, if you want to also experience that, go to jointaro.com. I'll leave a link for it in the description. would love to have you in the program. And the other benefit of this tip is that it gives you time to respond instead of react, especially when we hear negative news or something we didn't expect. 
then using this tactic of, hey, let me say that back to you. Let me make sure I understood you, gives you, your body, your mind, an opportunity to really understand, okay, what do I want to do next? As opposed to immediately reacting and lashing out or doing something that you might regret. Tip number four is to say thank you. And that one sounds obvious, but my argument is that there's a way to say thank you in a much more deep and high value way compared to how most people are doing it today. Typically, you're trying to find documentation or you need help debugging something and you ping someone for help, they help you and you say thank you and you move on with your life. And the missed opportunity here is the follow-up, right? So whatever project you're working on, when it does hit some milestone, then what you should do is go back and thank that person either in a direct message, like in a chat message, or when you send out an email update to the whole team, you can say, hey, thanks to that person for helping unblock this particular segment of the project. This has two really important benefits. Number one, it makes the person who you thank feel really good and acknowledged, especially if you thank them publicly. And number two, it keeps that person up to date on your project. So you can continue to collect input or feedback from them, or at the very least, now they're aware of how your project is progressing, which is really valuable for you and your performance review and valuable for them as an FYI in case it might impact their own work. The next tip is to be thoughtful about which medium you're using to communicate. In any workplace, you're going to have literally dozens of ways to send updates to the people who are interested. You could use email, team meetings, stand-up updates, one-on-one -on -one conversation, direct messages, or you could even do formal design documents. I remember a couple months after I joined Facebook, I was working with a team of three or four people, and a day after a meeting, I sent an email to them saying, hey, here's what we talked about. And they actually replied and said, why are you using email? It turns out that engineers at Facebook almost never use email. They instead will use Workplace to send updates and tag relevant people. And that's really important to know because every company is going to have a distinct style of how they expect updates to be communicated. And if you don't use that, you're at risk of getting lost. And you know, you might send an email out and no one actually ends up reading it. I would think about the message you're trying to send out along three dimensions. One, frequency. How often do you want people to hear about this? Number two is audience. Who should hear about it? And number three, important. How important is it that every person on that in that audience list actually understands the update? Based on that, you can then decide the ideal structure to communicate updates about information that you want to get out. An example of what not to do is if your project gets delayed and then you wait until stand-up update two days later to tell people about what happened. Stand-up updates are a very leaky way of sending out information. And there's also no guarantee that people will show up or remember what you're talking about. So in addition to the verbal update in stand-up, you should also give a written update about what happened and what you're doing to fix it. Delays are okay in software, but what's not okay is a surprise delay. The next tip I have is to always advance the conversation. And the most obvious way that this manifests is when you're dealing with asynchronous communication, like a chat message, and someone just sends you a message saying hello. There's actually a whole website dedicated to why you shouldn't do this, knowhello.net. And it boils down in my head to two reasons. Number one is that this is one extra round trip in the conversation that we could have avoided. Right, you send me a hello, and now I have to switch contact, I have to look at your message, reply back and say, hey, hello, what's up? And then you tell me the bulk of the message of whatever you need help with, and that is annoying and it wastes time. And the second reason too is that as the person who's requesting help, the person who's sending that first hello message, I think that your likelihood of getting a reply goes way lower if you don't actually embed the context in the initial message. Because whoever you're reaching out to, whether it's someone really senior at your company, or it's some influencer on YouTube or LinkedIn or whatever, or a potential customer, you wanna make it as easy as possible for them to understand what you're looking for and if they can help. The next tip is to know your audience. And the scenario here, which I've seen so many times, is that you're in some cross-functional sync and an engineer goes deep into the details of their project and some performance issue that they're debugging, but half the room, the product managers, the designers, and a lot of other people, they simply don't care about all these technical details. Your job is to make sure that people understand and act on whatever you are saying or writing to them. And the way you do that is by removing extraneous detail. Think about what the other person needs to know and what actually matters to them. So for any update which is more than two paragraphs long, a lot of people are not gonna read the whole thing. And so I will always include a TLDR, too long didn't read at the top, which contains the main message that I want people to remember from whatever I'm saying. This advice also gets screwed up in the other direction because people assume that the audience has context that they don't actually have. The final tip I have is to communicate with structure. Think about a logical grouping for the updates you're trying to communicate to your team or to the company. For example, some options of how to structure your update could be 
dividing up the work in terms of implementation time or delivery time, or it could be based on who is working on it, like which individual is responsible for which part of the system or which team is responsible for something. Or a third way of dividing up the update is by the domain. So you have all the front end tasks, all of the API layer and everything on the back end. So just think about what makes sense to the audience in how do they want to consume that update? What makes the most logical sense for them? The other thing that really helps with structure is to have imagery, either a diagram or an actual image of the work that you're doing. Images really are worth a thousand words and there's so much more that you can communicate in a spatial diagram that then people can refer to and use as a basis for further communication. And the other benefit is that you actually just seem way more legit if you're able to embed some sort of image in your block of text. At its core, this is really an exercise in empathy. You have to think about the audience and think about where are they coming from and how would they most like to receive the update? What information do they have already? What information are they looking for? Based on what you think will resonate with the audience and where they are currently, you have to structure your communication accordingly. And that's actually a general principle for every tip that we've talked about. You wanna be really cognizant of the person you are communicating with or the group of people you are communicating with and make sure you deliver information to make it as easy as possible for them. But I'd encourage you, try out an experiment where you try something new and see the outcome of that. See if that actually does change the dynamic of how you work with your team and how you get things done. We also have a communication masterclass available right now in Taro. So I'll leave a link for that in the description or you can find it by going to jointaro.com and searching for it. Let me know what other communication frameworks or tips you have that you could share with me and other people. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.